develop the ability to respond. Let life touch you, we say. Put it in parenthesis. Let life touch you. Don't let it kill you. But you've got to let it touch you. The full drama of life, let it touch you. Let sad things make you sad. Let happy things make you happy. You've got to take the time to wonder. You've got to let that affect you. You've got to let this dark side of life penetrate you. You've got to let the bright side touch you. The full panorama of human experience. You've got to take it in. Because that's, that's what makes you valuable now in your proceedings in the future. Your dealings in the future. Your contact with people in the future. Number one is what you absorbed. Number two, how it affected you. Not only what you got as a picture in your mind, but what you got as the content of your heart that was stirred. Something that reached you. A drama of life that reached out and touched you in an unusual way. Don't fail to yield to that. Okay? Some things are so sad that it makes you put your head between your legs. And some things make you sob and some things make you cry. Sometimes your eyes are moist most of the day as you watch uh, people's tragic lives unfold. But I'm asking you to let that be a part of your experience. Because when you get ready to translate by words, as we'll talk tomorrow, you need that content as well as the intellectual experience. Let life touch you. I'm the greatest guy in the world to take to the movies. I love, I love to be affected, right? I want sad things to make me sad and happy things to make me happy. I want to go on a journey, make me laugh, make me cry, scare me to death, shake me over hell. But don't leave me unaffected. I saw... A little piece in the paper in Australia one time said, see Dr. Zhivago on the big screen. I always enjoyed the movie Dr. Zhivago. I'd seen it three or four times over the years. It said, see it this time on the big screen. I love the big screen, don't you? The old cinema with the draperies and the balconies. An experience. These little cracker boxes leave a lot to be desired. Popcorn two inches deep. You walk out of your shoes, they stick to the floor. Sure enough, downtown Melbourne, Australia, big old theater, the draperies, the balconies, the whole bit. And one more time, I'm carried away by the drama, the Russian Revolution, Dr. Zhivago, the whole story. I'd always missed the significant ending of that story until this time. Comrade General said, Tanya, how did you come to be lost? And she said, well, I was just lost. He said, no, how did you come to be lost? She said, well, the city was on fire. The bombs were exploding. We were rushing, trying to escape, and I was lost. And he said, how did you come to be lost? She didn't want to say, but finally she did say, my father let go of my hand, and I was lost. Comrade General said, Tanya, I've been trying to tell you, Komarovsky was not your real father. This man, Dr. Zhivago, the poet, I'm telling you, I've found you. This was your real father. Would your real father have let go of your hand? I got the message. I mean, the other times, right? I'm eating popcorn, waiting for the movie to finish, right? I mean, (laughs) but this time I got it. I'm asking you to let the emotions flow because here's what people want to know. One, they want to know what you know, but they also want to know how you feel. So make sure that life stirs you. Make sure that you have been affected all day long as well as informed, as well as educated. Let your heart and soul be educated to the full drama of life as it unfolds for you and the people you see and what's going on around you. So number one, learn to absorb. Number two, learn to respond. Here's number three, and that is learn the ability to reflect. This is a useful skill. Reflecting simply means go back over. I call it run the tapes again. You've lived the day. Now go back over it. You've been through an experience. Now go back through it so that it becomes more useful for you in the future. And let me give you some good times to reflect. Number one, at the end of the day. Take a few hours at the end of the day. Just a little while. Go back over your calendar. Go back over where you went and who you saw and what they said and what you said and how you felt. And just let it affect you for a little while before you finally turn out the light and and go to sleep. Review the day before you finally finish the day. It'll make that day more useful. It'll fit more logically into your senses, and it'll fit more passionately into your heart and soul. The day. 
Each day is a piece of the mosaic of your life. I'm telling you. Number one, live it well. Number two, execute well. But number three, remember it well so that it becomes commodity, coin, currency, useful for the future. At the end of the week, take some more time. Go back over your calendar. At the end of the month, take half a day. At the end of the year, take a weekend. Call time to reflect about family, time to reflect about enterprise, time to reflect about priorities, time to reflect what you've been through and what you learned from it and how you came out of it and the skills you had and the skills you didn't have and the benefits and as well as the losses. Go back through, rehearse it again and again and again because that's what makes a valuable performance on the screen. That's what makes a valuable performance a play on Broadway. Someone who can reach where? Back. I'm telling you, back for experience. So, there's an interesting account. Old Testament says they worked six years and the seventh year was a sabbatical. Yes, maybe that year was for change of pace, we call it in the modern society. Yes, maybe it was a chance to visit, you know, a little more often with your family and friends. But I'm positive that seventh year called sabbatical was also a year to remember and reflect and go back over the last six years. The crops you planted and the crops that survived and the crops that you did well and the crops you didn't do well. And the people you met and what you saw and what you heard and what you did over the last six years. Now, why go back over the last six years so that you can use this one year of gathering the treasure in a more concentrated form? The essence of thought, heart, soul, and mind to do what? Gather it up and invest it in the next six years. So I'm asking you to take some time, reflecting time. New Testament said, every once in a while you should go to your closet. Interesting choice of language. Meaning a place away from everybody. You don't usually find everybody in your closet. It's away. And then the language is even more interesting. Here's what it says. When you get in there, shut the door. Now, that's interesting. Now, not to shut yourself in, but to shut everybody out for a while. Just to shut the busyness out. Just to shut the sounds out. Just to shut the commerce and everything that's going just to shut it out for a while and just stay in there for a while and think and ponder and wonder. Somebody asked me not long ago if I meditated. That's, that's a good place if you're going to meditate, I think, the closet. And I'm not sure I meditate, but I do mull. I mull. Don't you mull? We all have to mull. And I do ponder. I do ponder. And I do wonder. Now, wonder is a word that can only be useful for human beings, right? Crocodiles don't wonder. <laughs> only humans can wonder. Only humans can be awestruck by the immensity of life and the uniqueness of life and the brevity of life and the possibilities of life. Only humans can do that. And this is very useful in this closet experience to shut everything out for a while and mull and ponder, think, turn things over in your mind and to wonder about yourself and about life and about origin and about destiny and the pieces of your life that are working together. You just got to think about that. It's very useful. Then it says you open the door and come out of your closet with more power, more vigor, more vitality. Every once in a while, Jesus used to just disappear. They'd say, where is he? Said, Every once in a while, he just, he's gone. Nobody knows where he is. He's gone. Disappears. I've got a motorhome. That's what I do every once in a while. Just disappear in my motorhome with my motorcycles on the back. I ride the Jeep trails up on top of the mountain. That's my closet where I shut everything out for a while. No traffic lights. Fabulous place. I'm even getting my motorhome equip equipped with fax machine and all the stuff so I can stay in touch. I can't wait till we get satellite telephone. <laughs> you can be in touch with the world and still off lost in the mountains somewhere. My new mode for the future is to be in touch and out of reach. For a while, 
just for a while, for all of my busy life, here's what I seek, solitude, for all of my busy life chasing around the world from Spain to Italy to South Africa to Japan, I'm going to Russia this year, and Poland, Taiwan, all kinds of places, South America, for all of that busy life, I love solitude, a chance to get away. So I want my reputation for the future to be, you, you, you can contact him, but you can't find him <laughs> for a while, out of reach for a while. But I want you to consider this. Now, sometimes you just got to get away for a few minutes. Let your head clear, right? Let things settle in. Let the essence of life and the wonder of life, let it be part of your experience and how it's going. Then when you come from that experience, I'm telling you, you're wiser, you're stronger, You'll have an essence that most people don't have that never take the time in their busy lives just going, going, going. I'm telling you, this is for special people that want to exercise special gifts of influence, both in their own lives and over the people they're around and their organization, no matter how far throughout the world it might go. This is special. Learn to reflect. Here's how I describe it. Gathering up the past and investing it in the future. That's a unique experience. Gathering up the past. You know how to have a good 96 is at the end of 95, just ponder this last year, the mistakes you made and off track a little bit here. And if you'll fix that, I'm telling you. So the time to think about 96 is right at the end of 95, while it's still fresh. The time to think about next week is the end of, at, at the end of this week, while when some mistakes are still fresh, the cut is still open, and the wound hasn't even healed. That's the time to think, what should I do? Well, here's what I'm not going to do next week. See, that's important. This is only for mature people. The rest of the people are never going to get this. Now, here's number four. Develop the ability to act. Now you've got to put some of this substance now to work. The absorbing, the responding, the reflecting. Now you've got some equity you didn't have before. Now it's grown in scope and size. But now here's the key. Now you must put it to work. Here's what develops equities for the future. A piece of capital invested now results in the future. Tomorrow we're going to talk about treating part of your income as capital. And here's what you can do. Treat your experience as capital. But guess what you have to do with the experience called capital? You've now got to invest it. You've got to invest it in a phone call. You've got to invest it in a meeting. You've got to invest it in an invitation. You've got to invest it in a personal conversation. You've got to invest it in a, in a, in, in a get-together. You've got to invest it with the labor of your hands. You've got to invest it in designing uh, the future and setting goals. You've got to invest it in hard work. Okay, equities uninvested yield no further equity. Treasures, unless you treat part of it as capital and invest it, it yields no further multiplication. But if you'll treat part of your experience as investment and invest it in the next conversation, invest it in the next ability to communicate with someone else, I'm telling you, the return can be so awesome. And that's why I've gotten excited about doing seminars, and that's gathering up my experience and investing it. Number one, it makes me a fortune. It's made me a mega fortune. But it, the, the fortune is no longer important to me anymore. What's now important to me is to have someone come up and say, Mr. Rohn, with tears in their eyes, saying, my son, 11 years old, listen to your program, he's now 15, and you can't believe what it's done for his life. I want you to meet him someday. See, that makes my eyes moist, and I say, my gosh, what an experience I've had. A chance to take a piece of my life and invest it in the satellite waves and invest it in live in someone's life here today. This is an awesome experience for me, a chance to invest life into life a chance to make a part of your life capital and invest it like you would an investment of money in someone's life and then watch it grow and watch it multiply and watch someone take it and go do marvelous things with it. Tony Robbins came to my seminar when he was 17, a bit incorrigible. <laughs> His parents had tossed him out. But I could tell right away he was a remarkable kid. He wasn't the usual 17-year-old. And sure enough, an investment of my experience over the next three years as he worked for me promoting my seminars, now Tony travels around the world, has gone way on past old teacher here, and is doing some marvelous things around the world, spreading 
his ideas. See, you just never know who, who, who you're talking to. If only one of you would have showed up, I would have done this whole presentation because you never know who you're talking to. The person who can take it around the world, the person who can become an evangelist, the person who can light fires that you'll never light because you can't get there personally. You know, touch people you can never touch personally. But if you touch the person who touches the people, and that's what you've got an opportunity to do, touch the person who touches the people. Touch, touch the person who multiplies it by ten. Touch the person who multiplies it by a thousand. It gets to be awesome. So here's the key. Always act. Always set up some way to invest your life, invest your talent, invest your skill. This opportunity is one of the best way to invest time, energy, activity, gather up someone's attention, tell them a story, second to none. See if you can't spread the word, multiply by two, three, five, ten. A great way to invest. But develop the ability to act. Now here's the time to act when the idea is hot. When the emotion is fresh, that's the time to at least get it started. I talk about my library and how it immensely affected my life. If somebody says, oh, i got to have a library like Mr. Rohn's. That's the time to go get the first book. And then you go get the second book. And then before it cools off, you get the third book. And the first thing you know, you got the routine going. And then you got ten books. And then you got a hundred books. I'm just putting a place for a library up at the farm in Idaho. A place for two thousand books as an extension of part of my library. But see, that all started with an idea when Shof said, get the Bible and get the richest man in Babylon and get Think and Grow Rich and the record, as a, uh, the, record uh, the Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. And he said, get started, get started. And guess when I went and got it? Immediately, immediately, immediately. Here's what you don't want to happen, the law of diminishing intent. We intend when it's hot, but if you let it slide, sure enough, lethargy sets in, erosion sets in, the time to act is when it's hot. The time to act is when you feel the strongest. You don't have to do it all when you feel the strongest. But here's the key. Get it started. Big projects come from small beginnings. Key phrase, think big, start small. Somebody says, can you eat a whole elephant? And the answer is yes, one bite at a time. You can't eat it all in one meal. But you can take a project immense in size, beyond scope. You say, oh, what a vision, how powerful. Yes, but we can do it one at a time, one at a time, one invitation at a time. If you do something three times a day in one year, it's a thousand. You can't do something positive a thousand times and not get an extraordinary result. The key is what's easy to do is easy not to do. Three times is easy. It's easy to, easy not to. But don't let yourself get trapped into being inspired and then waste the inspiration by not, by not putting it in some kind of action to at least get it started. Talk to the very next person with a new enthusiasm. Talk to the next person with some new knowledge. Talk to the next person, you know. Step up another level in your next meeting, right? The next time you contact someone, a little higher level, a little more power, a little more vigor. Invest all this stuff immediately. That's how you preserve the content and get rewarded for the future. Now here's the last of the abilities. And that is develop the ability to share. Sharing is a remarkable human experience that has so many positives. Here's the first positive. When you share with another person, you probably get more than the person you share with. It's one of those unique paradoxes. It seems like if you gave something away, you'd have less, and the answer is no, strangely enough. When you give something away, you have more. You don't need to know how it works. It's like the sun coming up in the east. Don't study this stuff. All we need to know is what? It works. Some people are always studying the roots. Others are picking the fruit. It depends on what end of this you want in on. Sharing. Here's what's exciting about sharing, the multiple effect on the one who shares. If you share an idea with 10 different people, they get to hear it once, you get to hear it 10 times. Think of what it does for you. Rehearsing it over and over again and then struggling for the language to say it better and better and better. I'm telling you, the sharer now starts to multiply in value by 2, 3, 5, 10. 
Yes, those who receive it may start to multiply if they do something with it. But even if they don't, think of what it does for you. But I want you to know that if you'll start sharing with other people in a more intense way, what it does in return for you is so much more valuable. One, if you never did it, the value's there. But just by doing it, it multiplies in immense proportions. That's why I'm here. I want to be challenged. Here's one of my personal goals between now and the year 2000. To reach the peak of my skills. It's one of my goals. That's why I'm here. One of the major reasons why I'm here. I want to touch your lives, yes, but I want to reach the peak of my skills by the year 2000. So I've got some homework to do. I've got some books to read. I've got some periodicals to go through. I've I got some experience. I've got some more countries I've got to visit. I've got some more people I've got to learn to talk to. Right? I've got to challenge myself. Research, grow, perform, language, refinement in the next five years to reach the peak of my skills. Then my next goal is to see how many years in the 21st century I can invest those skills touching people's lives. That's a couple of my goals. But I want you to have some goals that makes you reach and makes you stretch and makes you grow. And this is one of the most important ones you could possibly take on. Finding ways to reach multiple people. Yes, if you just reach one a year, yes, you can have some effect. But you don't have to settle for one a year. You can reach one person a day. And you don't even have to settle for one a day. You can reach two or three a day. I'm asking you to step up the sharing mode, step up your language, step up your performance, step up your invitations, take on a bigger workload, take on more responsibility. You say, well, I got more than I can handle now. I'm telling you, in a more refined way, you can take on more. And guess who you want to go to work for you? People that are so busy they haven't got time. Those are the ones you want. Everybody that's got time on their hands, I'm telling you, probably won't recognize the idea when they see it. If you want somebody to take care of your children, find a mother that's got about six. She can always take on one more. Somebody that doesn't have any children, what? Don't want to be bothered. So go look for busy people. People say, I'm too busy. Say, you're the one I've been looking for. <laughs> what do you mean too busy? Say, hey, busy people can always work in another idea that can create a small fortune. Are you interested in hearing the story? I'm looking for busy people. I'm looking for active people who can take on one little more activity and maybe sow the seeds of a future fortune. Would you be interested in hearing the story? Go look for busy people. Look for active people. Look for people that have already got something going and need a little bit more. People that are willing to pour it on. People that are willing to burn the midnight oil. People that are willing to make deals with their family for a little while and say, hey, I'm off to harvest and I'll soon have it done. And when I get back, you won't believe the return. And we're going to go here and we're going to go there and we're going to do some magnificent things if you'll let me borrow some time. See, you've got to look for those kind of people. Okay. So share. What you will get in return is unbelievable. works for me. What this is going to do for me being here is beyond calculation. That's why I came. Otherwise, I wouldn't leave my family. Why would I do that? Unless I could have an extraordinary experience that I could gather up and take back to them that would be beyond something that they could possibly imagine. I want you to think in the same kind of terms. You can have more if you share what you got. If this cup is full, can it hold any more? And the answer is yes, only one way. If it's full, you first got to pour some out. Now you can hold some more. Why would you want to pour out what you've got so you can hold more of the next experience? And I'm asking you to take what you've got and pour it out. Give it as a gift. Give it away. Share it with everybody you can possibly reach. Your ideas about a wide range of things. And if you will share, if you will share, I'm telling you, you can hold more of the next experience. Some people cannot hold much because... They don't share what they've got. I'm asking you to reverse that process. Start sharing. Now, unlike this cup, when you pour it out, the cup remains the same size, not human beings. Human beings that pour out their experiences by words and language and deeds of heart and soul and hands, I'm telling you, don't stay the same. They expand. Their capacity now is more utilized as they expand, expand, expand. So if you want to expand more so you can hold more of the next experience when it's passed out, and that is called share what you've got, pass along what you've got, don't hold it in. Ancient script says, don't hide your light under a bushel. 
set it on a hill, set it out where people can see, where people can know this is something extraordinary. I'm asking you to do that. Now, if this is all the bigger you are, this is all you get. But if you'll expand by sharing, when opportunity is poured out, you'll get it. When the country is blessed, you'll get it. When joy comes in waves across the country for things we've done that are meaningful, I'm telling you, you'll get a bigger share than you used to back when you were only this big. Now you're this big. Okay. So sharing. A lady one time asked me in St. Louis, Missouri, she said, Mr. Owen, I've been to five of your seminars over the last two and a half years. And she said, I've got a question. I said, if you've been here five times, you deserve an answer. <clears throat> what is it? She said, my question is, how do you stay so excited all the time? Every time I've seen you, you're on top, you're going great, things are happening well for you. She said, how do you stay that way? That's what I need to know. I said, well, I think one of the reasons is I attend all these seminars. <laughs> telling you. You get about five of these in one month, you'll be flying. <laughs> now here's the last one on personal development. And then we'll touch on communication to get started and finish up tomorrow. Last is lifestyle. We went through in that last seminar the five major pieces to the life puzzle, one was philosophy, we're affected by what we know. Nothing worse than being stupid, right? Then was attitude, we're affected by how we feel. This is the intellectual part, set of sail, no matter how the wind blows. This is the emotional part, the power. And number three was activity. We're affected by what we do. you got to do the disciplines, investing knowledge and emotions into disciplines. Always embrace the disciplines. Why? Key phrase, they work miracles. Disciplines work miracles because they transfer ideas into substance, into equity, into increase. You can read every health book in the world, but unless you put some of it to work by falling on the floor, trying to do the first five push-ups, I'm telling you, the book will be of no value to you no matter what you paid for it. You say, well, I got it cheap. Who cares if you got it cheap? The key is a worthy idea invested now starts to yield a return. So embrace the discipline. Start with the easy ones. Then you can handle the more complicated ones like running the world, like running a world-class enterprise, like being responsible for a fortune, not just a paycheck. Then we found out the fourth piece was results. The whole reason for studying philosophy and attitude and disciplines is to produce results. And we took this phrase home. Results is the name of the game. What other game is there than to see what you can do with the seed and the soil and the seasons and the miracle of life? The key is to see what you can do with it. Why create a country like this? To see what you can do with it. Why mastermind all of the stuff that's available in the American economy is to see what you can make of it. Why write thousands and millions of books enough to last for a lifetime to see if you'll read them. Why create a plan, taking a magnificent idea finally around the world to see what you can make of it, to see what you can do with it. That's what life is all about, finding some value and see what you can turn it into. Find a seed and see if you can't eventually have a garden. Find an idea and see if you can't eventually have an enterprise. Find a book and see if you can eventually have good health that will save you and spare you the tragedies of the future. That's what learning is all about, is finally putting it into activity and creating results. This is the name of the game. That was number four. Then number five was lifestyle. And I call this the five major pieces to the life puzzle. And the last one was very important because here's what I said. The final and unique experience of life is to take your results and jot this word down, fashion for yourself. Fashion, like weaving a tapestry. Fashion a good life. Now, first, you've got to be like a philosopher and decide what is a good life. What is a good government? What is a good society? 
But ultimately, for my experience while I'm here for a period of time on this spinning planet, no telling what's beyond, but I have a feeling this is not a practice session. I have a feeling this is the real thing. <laughs> what constitutes a good life? First, you must study. Then you must practice to see if you can't good at, get good at not just designing a living, but designing a good life. That's what matters the most. Here's what a living is, a means to an end of creating a dynamic life. Yes, part of your life is in the performance. Yes, part of your life is in the exercise of your skill. Yes, humans were meant for enterprise. But the ultimate summit living on the mountain top is to see if you can't weave with the substance you've earned and the skills you've developed and the performance that you've done. Now weave, a master weave called a good life. And I simply call that life style, life lived in style. Mr. Schof was big on that. Schof taught me the simplest things. Schof taught me what the word tip meant, T-I-P. What does that mean? To ensure promptness, tips to ensure prompt service. Schof said, well, Mr. Rohn, if a tip is to ensure prompt service, when should you give it? Answer, up front. Now, see, I didn't know that. I said, no, good service, good tip, lousy service, no tip. Schof said, no, no, Mr. Rohn. Sophisticated people don't take a chance on poor service. See, I finally got it. And he taught me those simple little things. He said, you've got a special friend. You want to make lunch at the little cafe special? When you walk in to have lunch, you call Mary over, the waitress. Mary, arm around the shoulder. she taught me all this. Arm around the shoulder. Mary, here's $10. Would you take special care of me and my friend for lunch? Shof said, you won't believe what happens. <laughs> he said, Mary will hover around your table. She will <laughs> hover. They know how to hover, but it takes 10 bucks to get them to <laughs> hover. Otherwise, you're saying, where's my waitress? She's gone on a break. I, she's gone. Shof taught me. Shof taught me the value of just a quarter back then when a quarter was a quarter. Now it takes a dollar, but Shof said if you're getting your shoe shine and the shoe shine boy has done an exceptionally great job and you look down, you got one of the world's all-time great shines and you pay him and now you reach in your pocket and get a handful of change, shall I give him one quarter or two quarters tip from a neat shine? Shof said this, if two amounts pop in your mind, always go for the higher amount. Here's what he said. Become a two-quarter person. And I said, you know, what difference would that make? He said, all the difference in the world in whether you're a one-quarter or a two-quarter person. Wow. He said, if you just give one quarter and say, no, I'll just give him one quarter. He said, that'll bother you the rest of the day. <laughs> you'll look down and see this all-time great shine and you'll say, I got to be a little cheap, one quarter. And guess what you are? A little cheap, one quarter. But he said, if you go for the second quarter, Shof said, you can't believe the happiness and the, and the better day you can buy for yourself for just an extra quarter. One, the smile on the shoeshine boy's face. Let that linger in your consciousness the rest of the day. And it, you don't have to be ridiculous. But by being generous, it's just that little extra. By being the little extra, that's what counts most. Lifestyle. So, if you must, live as you will. But here's what you can do. Change your lifestyle. It can be the same money, but totally different style. A man attended my seminar in St. Louis came up to me after the seminar was over and said, Mr. Owen, you've touched my life. I'm going to make some major changes. And I said, hey, great. You know, a lot of people say, touched me. But sure enough, I came back to the city, I don't know, a couple of years later, maybe a little less, and he said, walked up to me when the seminar was over and said, do you remember me? And I said, not your name, but you're the man that said, I'm going to change my life. He said, Mr. Owen, you won't believe what's happened. 
He said, I went home and started changing a lot of things that you suggested. One was my relationship with my family called lifestyle. He said, I've got two lovely teenage daughters. A mother and father couldn't ask for any more model teenage daughters. Never give us a moment's trouble. He said, I'm the one that always gave the trouble. He said, my girls love to go to the rock concerts. And he said, I was always giving them a hard time. No, I don't want you to go. You know, you won't be able to hear for the rest of your life. You know, that's the wrong crowd, you know, and I'm afraid you'll come home late. And he gave them all this static. And he said, they would beg and beg and beg and say, look, Daddy, we'll be home on time. We don't give you any problem. Come on. And he'd say, well, okay, if you have to go, here's the money. He said, that's the kind of a father I was. He said, I decided to change all that, among a lot of other things. And he said, Mr. Owen, to give you the story, just not long ago, he said, I picked up the paper, and there was an announcement. A favorite performer of my daughter's was coming to town. And he said, guess what I did? He said, I went down and bought the tickets myself. And I put them in an envelope, and I brought them home. And I met my daughters later on that day, and I said to them, when I met them, I handed them this envelope, and I said, you may not believe it, but inside this envelope are two tickets for the upcoming concert. They couldn't believe. <laughs> he said, now don't open the envelope till you get to the concert. They said, okay. So they go to the concert on concert night, walk in, open the envelope, hand the tickets to the usher. He says, follow me. And he starts walking down front. And they said, hold it, hold it. Something must be wrong. And he looked again and said, no, follow me. Tenth row center. Now they cannot believe. <laughs> The only tickets they were able to beg for, right, was third balcony, right, where you can't see through the smoke. He said, I stayed up a little late that night. Sure enough, a little after midnight, my two daughters come bursting through the front door. One lands in my lap. The other one's got her arms around my neck. And they're both saying, you've got to be one of the world's all-time great fathers. <laughs> wow. What a difference. So here's the clue to the story. Same money, different father. I'm asking you to consider that. You can transform yourself into the person you would like to be. And all you've got to do is start the process. Any father who wants to can dazzle his family with his present resources. You don't need any more resources. All you need is a new, fresh commitment that you're not going to miss the opportunity. And sometimes it isn't that we want to, but we get busy and we let it slide. You cannot let systems slide and hope for the increase in equity. It's not going to happen. You can't fail to make the deposit in the bank and hope that the bank account is growing. It isn't going to happen. If you want the bank account to grow, you've got to put in the deposits. And if you want to let it grow over a long period of time, you've got to leave it in there and let it compound, compound, compound. And I'm telling you, your life experiences can compound if you will take your knowledge and idea, weave it like a tapestry, fashion each occasion. You can make occasions so special, kids will remember them forever. We call it happy birthday, but for some kids it's not a happy day. It's a day to forget the rest of their life because somebody left it unwoven, never took care of the details. I'm asking you not to let that happen. Fashion your life in every respect. Take care of the details. Make this note. The drama is in the details. Take care of the details. I was just at the Beverly Hilton Hotel a couple of days ago. And next to the Beverly Hilton Hotel is a place called Trader Vic's. Neat place in Beverly Hills. And I took a lovely lady there many years ago. I won't tell you how many, but a lot of years ago. It was a very special occasion. When we got there, the attendants of the parking lot came dashing out, opened up the doors, both doors, and let us out into the restaurant we went. The service was unbelievable. We got the best table in the house. The meal was exquisite. When we, and they brought us a special dessert and said what? Compliments of the chef. Wow. Finally, it's time to leave. And I sign the deal and we walk out. When we walk out the door, my car 
is sitting right there with both doors open and the motor is running. My lady friend said, I can't believe it. She said, you never left the table. I said, oh, this, is, this is just a magical place. <laughs> she was so impressed. We got in the car and we drove away. She was dazzled. Then when we got a couple of blocks away, she said, Jim, hold it, Jim, hold it. I just thought of something. I said, what? She said, you never, you never tipped, you know, the guys that had the car and everything, you never tipped them. We just, we just left. I said, no, hey, it'll be okay. She said, no, no, we got to go back. We got to go back. You can't have that much service and not, you know, pass out the money. Come on. Then I had to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> that earlier that day in the afternoon, I went to the Trader Vic's and I handed out the money so that all this magical stuff would happen. <laughs> Whoa. I'm asking you to figure out ways to create lifestyle for yourself and for your family. Here's why. Lifestyle lived well now becomes an equity of heart and soul that you can carry back with you to the marketplace. If you'll live your life in extraordinary ways, yourself and your family, and weave all of this stuff like a tapestry, I'm telling you, when you get back to the marketplace, you'll have some equities that'll be missing in most everybody else's life. You'll have an edge nobody else will have. You'll have a spirit that'll be missing in everybody else. You'll have an advantage at the meeting. Somebody wonders why. You've got this magic. You say the same words that everybody else says, but somehow it means more. Somehow it penetrates. Somehow it reaches the heart and the soul. How come this person is so unique and so powerful? Just their presence and their awe is unique. Part of it is the weaving of a lifestyle that makes you a unique person, not only for your family at the moment of the occasion, but now makes you powerful beyond belief in the marketplace. You'll have a charisma no, most people would envy the rest of their lives. You'll have an edge. You'll have something, undefinable something, that's woven in these moments when you take care of yourself and your family and your friends, special occasions, special stuff. A man becomes almost invincible if he walks out of the house with the kisses of his children on his cheeks and the imprint of his wife's arms around his body. Who can touch him? Who can match him in content? Wow. Now here's the last one on lifestyle. Jot this down. Don't miss anything. See if you cannot do it all. I'm often asked, especially the women ask every once in a while, can you have it all, Mr. Rowan? Can you be a mother and can you do this and can you run an enterprise and can you run the world and can you run your family and can you do it all and can you be happy and can you ha and the answer is yes here's what ancient script says and this is some of the best i've got for the day it says strive for perfection it didn't quite give us the assurance that we could be perfect but here's what it says and there must be something highly valuable in the striving for perfection don't settle for less then the maximum striving for perfection, the perfection of your skills in the marketplace, the perfection of your fashioning a good life at home, keep striving for perfection. I keep striving for the perfect language, for the perfect words, and you can never quite reach the perfect string of words and vocabulary that illuminates and causes incredible awareness. It, it doesn't seem like you quite get there, but the journey to get there is so awesome, number one, in the effect, and number two, in the return, that you cannot hesitate to accept my challenge on this. Strive for perfection. See how good you can possibly get at executing in the marketplace and being valuable at home, exercising the design of life as well as making a living. And so here's what you must do. Don't miss anything. My father's 92, and he doesn't miss anything. Whatever comes within driving reach, my father's there. Every night of the week. I called him last night at 10.30. He wasn't home yet. <laughs> my father is at church. My father is at the concert. My father is watching the kids play softball. 
my father every night has got something going that he's going for to see what he can see and feel what he can feel. When I get there next week or when I come back from Europe, I'm telling you, I'm going to be there about four days. He'll have all four days, especially the evenings, he'll have them all planned. He said, we're going to go here on Tuesday night and we're going to go here on Wednesday night and we're going to go here on Thursday night. Got it all planned. Unbelievable. I want you to have that thirst for not missing anything. On a slow night, me and Papa go to the library and watch films on a slow night. Then if we go somewhere and we get out at 9.30, 10 o'clock, he says, it's too early to go home. <laughs> I mean... So there's some late night places when Papa knows where to go. He said, let's go to Perkins and see who we can see. I'm telling you, don't miss anything. Louis Armstrong, I mean, his voice was almost gone. And I said to myself, I got to go see Louis before he's gone. But guess what? I kept saying, I got to go see Louis. And finally he was gone and I missed him. I'm asking you, don't let that happen to you. Somebody you want to hear, I'm telling you, start making plans right now. I don't care if it's a week from now, a month from now. Make plans to make sure that comes true before they're gone. Go see the plays. Go see the concert. Go listen to the music and let it thrill your heart and soul. I just became acquainted with a new Spanish song they're playing over and over in Los Angeles. Solo 2, mi amor, solo 2. Don't miss the song. Don't miss the lyrics. Don't miss the performance that reaches the heart and soul and expands the awareness. Not only is it pleasure to be enjoyed, joy and ecstasy beyond measure, but it's an equity that's retrievable and it's investable when you get back to the marketplace and get back to your family. You've got this extra dimensions of life that nothing else will take the place of. So search out all the possibilities. Don't miss the poet. Don't miss the poetry. Don't miss the lyrics. Don't miss the play. Don't miss the performance. Don't miss the game. My friend Mark Hughes went to see the big fight, Sugar Ray and Duran. And that was the, one of the first times that uh, Ray Charles sang America the Beautiful. One of the first times. There was about 85,000 people there. Mark said, Ray Charles stole the show. The fight was second. <laughs> as he wove the magic, as he's done for several years, and now some stations close with his America the Beautiful. But that was the one of the first times he said it. And Mark said 85,000 people were electrified beyond belief as they heard that rendition as only Ray Charles can sing it. I am asking you, don't miss the chance. Maybe you haven't got the chance, but don't miss the chances you do have. Don't get lazy in lifestyle. Don't get lazy in fashioning for yourself the good life, the good life. And I'm glad I'm here making some kind of contribution. God bless. Woo!